So I've been using iOS 16 for over three months now. I'm gonna be showcasing some of my favorite features and answering the million dollar question, is it worth updating? Let's begin. iOS 16 is gonna absolutely change the way how you use your iPhone somewhat, making your life a little bit more easier and kicking things off with the redesign lock screen. Right when you update it, you're gonna see this fresh new lock screen. Now the widgets that I have on my lock screen that I use for the last three months is the activity widget because I go to the gym Monday through Friday in the morning time. It is cool to see your activity rings fill up right there on your lock screen. I have my AirPods battery percentage or Bluetooth headphones and as well as the current weather temperature right there on the lock screen. And to make things even cooler with the upcoming iPhone 14 Pro with that always on display, you're going to be able to see your lock screen widgets pretty much at all times. I cannot wait for the iPhone 14. Make sure you guys thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you guys don't miss any coverage on the iPhone 14. You can also switch out the date on the top to the weather conditions, your upcoming calendar events, etc. And alongside with that, you could be able to change the font, change the color of the clock. So you could be able to customize your lock screen from the ground up and it doesn't even stop there. You could be able to add your photos, of course. And the way how iOS 16 is positioned, you could be able to have your the substance of the photo so in this case if i take a picture of myself it could be able to put the clock behind me so it's using machine learning to identify the substance of the background and put the substance behind me while still seeing it and you can very quickly change the wallpaper effect so you have black and white dual tone and you also have color wash which you could be able to select uh different colors and at any given time you could be able to switch different lock screens and this is going to help with the focus this was introduced last year on ios 15 where you could be able to set focus so for example if you're going to work you're not going to have instagram notifications or game notifications just to name a few maybe for school you maybe have the blackboard notification come in is only going to focus towards stuff that you cater to now me personally i don't use focus but here's where ios 16 take it a step further with different lock screens you can have different focus in points maybe an all black wallpaper could be for work maybe when you get to the gym you can have some inspiring quotes to keep you motivated when you're working out so complete overall to the lock screen it could literally take 10 minutes to explain everything but let's just move on you can customize your lock screen making it more you Number two, this one came a little bit on the late side, but this made a world of difference to be able to see your battery percentage. If you take it over to the settings, take it over to battery, you could be able to toggle on your battery percentage. Yes, finally, Apple has brought back the battery percentage without you checking your notification center or I'm sorry, your control center. Whoever have the SE, this doesn't concern you. This is not going to make a difference, but if you have a notch based iPhone, or a pill shape cutout. Well, now we have the dynamic island. This is a welcome change. And yeah, it's here, it's back. This is something small, but makes a difference. If you take it over to the settings yet again, and you go over to sound and haptics, and then keyboard feedback, you can enable haptics. Now, every time you press a key on your iPhone, it's gonna be able to make a sudden haptic. It feels so much better typing on an iPhone than ever before. You could finally be able to unsend or edit your text messages. Now, yes, on paper, this is a good feature. If you make a mistake, you could be able to edit it out on the fly. You could be saying something and then you take it back. And then now it's like, whoa, but your iPhone is actually gonna notify when the person edited the message or unsend it. So it's not gonna be too bad, actually. Same thing on mail, you could be able to unsend mail. I don't use Apple Mail, I use Spark. You can also schedule emails. You can set a time and it could be able to send that email. I love the fact how you could be able to take a picture and cut out the background and send it to maybe your friends. You could copy it. It removes the background and be able to turn it into a PMG file, making it transparent. All those years of using Photoshop, it comes down to this. My iPhone is doing it for me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And staying within the Photos app, you could be able to see your duplicates. So if you're a type of person to take multiple pictures of the same thing, you could be able to see all your duplicates all in one folder. This is pretty nifty. iOS is also gonna show you the space. So how big are those photos? And alongside with that, your hidden folder is gonna be locked via Face ID or Touch ID, and as well as your recently deleted. I wanna talk about Maps. Maps received a pretty beefy update. First and foremost, everything has been enhanced and it just overall looks beautiful. You guys remember iOS 6, the initial release of Apple Maps? It was terrible. And now seeing Apple Maps improving this far in this level, it's pretty nice. The crazy thing is, it don't even stop there. 
you could be able to add multiple stops let's say you're gonna go to ihop right and then you're gonna go to a tool body repair shop and then you're going back home you could be able to add everything into one trip so once you get to your destination to ihop then when you leave there it's gonna start the next direction to the body repair shop. I don't know about you guys, but live text is one of my favorite iOS 15 features. And with iOS 16, Apple took it a step further. Live text can now recognize videos. If you're watching a video, you could be able to pick up the live text there. Dictation received a little small update. And as you type in, you could be able to talk to your iPhone and you could type at the same time. So no longer where you have to tap on dictation and then it cancels out your whole entire keyboard you can be able to do both now subscribers today now let's talk about facetime this one here received pretty decent updates first and foremost you have live captions this is going to allow you to have captions to your facetime calls it's fairly accurate i would say it's 80 percent accurate there's sometimes where it can get it wrong. It depends on the other person's end where if they're in a noisy environment, sometimes the phone is not gonna be able to get it 110%. Even the curse words, it can get all the curse words out the book. And yeah, live captions is pretty cool. Now, one thing to keep in mind of, this is something that you will have to enable. It's not gonna work out the box. So you gotta take it over to the settings, FaceTime, and live captions. From the time this recording, it's still in beta. It may not be in beta when you're watching this video. Now, also, this is gonna take up some battery life as well as a little bit of storage on your device. So just keep that in mind. And alongside with that, you have hands-off FaceTime. So let's say you're in the car, you're on your iPhone, you're on a FaceTime call, you're getting ready to go inside your home, you could be able to pick up your iPad and pick up the FaceTime call on your iPad or MacBook. It works shockingly well. That's gonna be a feature that you're gonna love if you have multiple Apple devices. You have improvements to portrait mode on the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro, so everything is more accurate, it's gonna be more refined around the glasses, hair. Now, unfortunately, not every single feature is present here as of yet. More than likely, it'll be out on iOS 16.1. Those features include iCloud shared photo libraries. The live activity is not available, and that's one I was really looking forward to. And imagine having that with the always on display on the iPhone 14. Emergency SOS via satellite isn't here too also. So yeah, it is missing out on some features that Apple promised. And you know what? I didn't even get around to testing out the Apple Pay later, and I didn't have any friends who are on iOS 16. Maybe I might make a little shorts on it, demonstrating it. Now, in terms of iPadOS 16, this update isn't available yet. I am going to make a video on that. Should you update or is it worth updating to iOS 16? The answer is yes, without a doubt. From the performance perspective, everything is snappy on the iPhone 13 Pro. I'm not sure about the previous iPhones. Even from the beginning, I haven't really noticed any uh, performance issues, but there were some bugs, occasional bugs in the beginning, but those has been ironed out. But I always recommend waiting until a 0.1 update just for further stability. And then you get more features on top of that too as well. With this iOS 16 update, it's just a breath of fresh air. If you skip it on the iPhone 14 series, updating your phone to iOS 16 is gonna feel like a brand new phone. It's not a dramatic change like iOS 7, but nonetheless, that lock screen change, it, it did it for me. And to be able to unsend or edit iMessage, this is an update that you gotta need.